good morning tau overflows unusual events while osho was in mother's womb jeevan suman ban naino me ashruli jeevan suman ban naino me ashruli teri hum vandana kare jeevan suman ban naino me ashruli mukt hriday se manvina jan ka ti mukt hriday se मनवीणा जन का तेरी जन्म जन्म अर्चना करे जीवन सुमन बन नैनो मेंशुली नैनो में श्रुली तेरी जन्म जन्म हम अर्चना करे हम अर्चना करे वेन ओशो वॉज फाइव मंथ्स ओल्ड इन हर मदर्स होम अमेरिकल हैपन she was going from her husband's home to father's home it was rainy season it is customary in india for the first child to be born at the home of the mother's father so although it was rainy season and very difficult no roads she had to go riding a horse as soon as possible if she had waited longer then it would become more difficult so she went with one of her cousins along the way a river narmada was to be crossed the river was in flood and when they reached the boatman saw the mother pregnant and asked mother's cousin about the relationship he was not aware that it would put him into trouble so he simply said we are brother and sister the boatman refused saying i cannot take you because your sister is pregnant and you are not too instant free in india and there is an old customs perhaps it is started during the time of krishna that one should not travel on waters particularly in a boat with one's sister's son there is a danger of boat sinking the boatman said what is the guarantee that the child in the womb is a girl not a boy if it is a boy it w- i won't take the risk because it is not a question of my life instead it is a question of 60 other people who are in the boat either you come or your sister can come both i will not take on both sides there were hills and wild forest and the boat used to sail only once in the morning from this side to the other side and in the evening it will return this was a daily routine so for 3 days they continued to ask <coughs> continued to beg him saying that she was pregnant and she should and he should be kind he said i cannot help this is not done if you can give me a guarantee that this is not a boy i can take you but how can you give me a guarantee for 3 days the two stayed in the temple nearby in that temple also lived a saint who was very famous in those days and around the temp- temple he has the city was risen and he was known as a saint sai baba not the sai baba of shirdi but they were contemporaries finally the mother had to ask the sai baba 
can you do something? For three days we have been here and I am pregnant. My brother has told the boatman that he is my brother and the boatman will not take us in the boat. Now unless you do something or say something to the boatman, we are in a fix what to do. My brother cannot leave me alone. I cannot go alone to the other side because on the both sides there are hills and deep forest. So at least for 24 hours I have to be alone. Osho says he has never met Sai Baba but in a way I have met him. I was five months old. He just touched the mother's belly. My mother said, what are you doing? He said, I am touching the feet of your child. The boatman saw this and said, what are you doing? You have never touched anybody's feet. And Baba said, this is not anybody. You are a fool. You should take them to the other side. Don't be worried. The soul that is in the womb is capable of saving thousands of people. So don't be worried about your 60 people. Take her. Osho's mother became aware that she was carrying someone special in her womb. Osho says, as far as I understand, Sai Baba was a wise man. He really fooled the both men. There is no miracle. There is nothing. And boats do not sink just because somebody is traveling with sister's son. There is no rationality in the idea. It is just absent. Perhaps sometimes accidentally it may have happened and then it became a routine idea, a tradition. Osho says, my own understanding is that because during the time of Krishna's his mother's brother was told by the astrologers that one of the children of your sister will kill you. He kept his sister and brother-in-law in prison and she gave birth to seven children, seven boys, and he killed each one of them. The eighth was Krishna and when, of course, God is born, the locks of the prison opened up and the guards fell asleep and Krishna's father took the child out. The river Yamuna that flowed by the side of the kingdom was in flood. Kans was the person who was killing the sister's son in the fear that one of the sons was going to kill him. The Yamuna was in flood and it was one of the biggest rivers in India. The father of Krishna was very much afraid, but somehow the child was to be taken to the other side to a friend's home where a girl was born. And he was to exchange the boy for the girl. He could bring the girl back with him because the next morning Kans would be asking there, where is the child? The planning to kill him. A girl he would not kill. It had to be a boy. But how to cross the river? There was no boat in the night and it has to be crossed. But when God can open the locks without keys, without anyone opening them, they simply opened up and doors opened up and guards fell asleep that God could be taken out. So he put the child in a bucket on his head and passed through the flooded river. Something like that had happened to Moses when the ocean parted. This time it happened in an Indian way. It could not have happened to Moses because the ocean was not Indian. Instead it was a river. and. He entered the river. The river started rising higher. He was very much afraid what is happening. He was hoping the river would subside, but it started rising. It went to the point where it touched the feet of Krishna. Then it started receding. This is 
the Indian way, it cannot happen any other way. How can river rise to such a point when God is born and passing through her? Just giving way is not enough, not mannerly. So it rose and touched the feet of Krishna before it started to recede. Since that time there has been an idea that there is a certain antagonism between a person and his sister's son because Krishna killed his uncle, mother's brother, Kans. The river was crossed, it subsided, it favored the child. Since then rivers are angry against the uncles of the child, all the rivers in India, and that superstition is carried even today. Osho told my mother, one thing is certain that Sai Baba must have been a wise man and he had some sense of humor, but she won't listen. And it became known in the village what had happened. And to support it, after one month, another thing happened in life. There are so many coincidences out of which you can make miracles. <coughs> Once you are bent upon taking a miracle, then any coincidence can turn into a miracle. After one month, there was a great flood again, and that was in front of my mother's house. It was rainy season. Across the narrow road, there was a lake, and the flood water started rising, and the road was covered and became like a big river. And the water, the road, was completely filled with water like a river and it almost became oceanic. As far as you could see it, it was water all around. And that year perhaps India had the biggest flood ever. Flood ordinarily happens every year in India, but that year it was a strange. The floods started reversing the river's flow of water. The rains were so heavy that ocean was not able to take the water as quickly as possible. So the water at the ocean front was stuck. It started flowing backward where small rivers fell into the river and big rivers were not able to take extra water in them. Osho says, I have never seen it. Um, that one, one also I missed, but my mother says that it was a strange phenomenon to see water coming upwards and it started entering the house. The, it entered the house. It was a two-storied house. The first floor was completely submerged in water. Then it started reaching the second floor where in order to save themselves, everybody sat on a bed. And that is the highest uh, point. And because she thought if Sai Baba is right, then something will happen. And it must be a coincidence that water came up to my, to the level of my mother's belly and started receding. These two miracles happened before I was born. So I have nothing to do with them but they became known when I was born. I was almost like a saint in the village. Everybody was so respectful. People were touching my feet, even the older ones. I was told later on that whole village has accepted me as a saint. Enough for now.